Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. And today I wanted to do a video on the subject of ectopic heartbeats. And in particular, uh, I was interested in um, trying to address a question that a lot of people ask and they say, well, you know, why is it that one day I'm fine and then out of the blue, I'm suddenly hit by these ectopic heartbeats? Why is it so variable? Uh, and I was particularly interested in trying to find out a little bit about how our sleep patterns affect our ectopic heartbeats. We know sleep disturbances are very common these days. Uh, a ton of people suffer from insomnia, pretty well much, you know, one in two people even more than one in two people I meet say they don't sleep very well. And therefore, um, I was just doing some research tonight. I came across a really, really interesting paper and I thought I would share it with you uh, to show you exactly how sleep and disruption of sleep can affect ectopic heartbeats, okay? So this is a study that was uh, published in Sleep Journal on April the 1st in 2016. So a very recent study uh, published in Sleep Journal. And if after this you head over to my Facebook page, uh, I will try and post the whole study somewhere so that you can see exactly what it says for yourself. Uh, but the interesting thing was this is a study that was done in uh, Canada, okay? And they did something very clever. Basically, what they had is in their hospital, they have a bunch of patients who are having monitoring. Okay, so they are, they are strapped to the ECG monitor and they have this thing called telemetry, which means that their ECGs, their heart rhythm is being recorded constantly and is available to be looked at. Now, in the same hospital, they have this thing where if you have an emergency code, i.e. if there is a major cardiac arrest or a major problem, then an alarm goes off. And when that alarm goes off, it goes off in every patient's room and it is uh, set loud enough to wake the patient up. It's like having a fire alarm, uh, but instead they have these emergency alarms, for example, a cardiac arrest or, you know, a violent incident. So the alarm goes off and the alarm is designed to wake people up, okay? So what they did was they decided that they were going to see whether ventricular ectopics on a 24-hour, on a halter monitor in these people who were being uh, recorded continuously, being monitored continuously, would change depending on whether their sleep was disturbed by these alarms. And what they did was they looked at 87 patients and they um, had 2,600 or so hours of telemetry to look at. And what they found was very interesting, that during the nights with two or fewer alarms, the ectopics, the number of PVCs or ectopics per hour went down by 33% and remained 30% lower the next day. Okay, very interesting that they went down on the night when the patients didn't have a disrupted sleep, but remained low on the day after. Now, on the nights where you had more than four or more alarms, i.e. the patient was woken up four or more times, the number of PVCs went up by 23%. But even more interestingly, that the next day when they looked at them, the PVCs had gone up by 85%. So of course the PVCs went up during the night that the patient was being woken up, but the PVCs went up many fold on the day after, okay? And this is really, really interesting because it points to the fact that when you have disrupted sleep, it is not just during that period, during that night, that you get an increase in ectopy, but actually uh, on the next day as well. And that's what that may be one of the reasons why some people will say, look, I've been having such a good time, and then suddenly out of the blue today I feel awful. And maybe in some ways that is related to disrupted sleep patterns. 
Undoubtedly, we know that if you disrupt the sleep patterns, you alter the autonomic system, you increase your cortisol, you increase your stress hormones, you increase your adrenaline, you reduce the parasympathetic system, a lack of sleep or disruptive sleep is hugely inflammatory. So it figures that if you disrupt sleep, you'll get more ectopics. But what this goes to show is that the that effect of disrupted sleep carries on into the day after and is more magnified on the day after. So I think it's really, really important that if you suffer from ectopics and if you have a problem sleeping or if you have a problem getting enough sleep, that you get help to try and sort your sleep patterns out. Because undoubtedly, if you sleep better, you feel better. Okay, the byproduct of it is you'll have less ectopics. Another byproduct of it is you will feel more energetic. And therefore, um, it is really, really important. And the, one of the things I think is that the problem is that people are forgetting to sleep. And the reason they're forgetting to sleep is because people lie in bed these days and they watch TV or they play on their gadgets or they're on their phones, etc., etc. And therefore, we've stopped associating the bed with sleep. And uh, someone told me that actually what we have to try and do is retrain ourselves and say, okay, well, we won't lie in bed until we're ready to sleep. And it's only when we're ready to sleep, when we've put all the gadgets aside and all the, all the TV and everything outside, and that's when you lie in bed so that you start associating your bed and that lying position with sleep so that that will then propagate and mean that whenever you lie on the bed then you'll automatically start sleeping at this point in time lying in the bed does not necessarily to the body mean you're ready to sleep it just means that you know you can do lots of things and so you have to retrain yourself but cbt may help as well in a big way but i really really think it's a very very important part of getting better if you're suffering from ectopics is to address your sleep pattern so i hope this was useful uh, as i say if you come and become friends with me on facebook uh, I'll try and post this um, the paper on there. Okay, uh, the paper's credits. The paper was um, uh, I wasn't, of course. You know, it's not my work, but, but I just wanted to acknowledge the people who did the research. And the author was a Stu Stephen Edward Miner and Zay Wolfart. <coughs> And I'll put this uh, paper up on, on the website, okay? Great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please let me know. Please, uh, please leave me a message. Uh, uh, please consider sharing the video. It motivates me no end uh, when I see that the videos are being shared and people are appreciating them. That is the best, best motivation I can get. So I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. Um, just a few credits. This is my website, www.yourcardiology.co.uk. My uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, that's my Facebook can be accessed through yourcardiology at gmail.com. My email address is yourcardiology at gmail.com too. So if you like it, please consider sharing. Please drop me a line. I'd be really grateful. All the best. Take care.